Okay, I think we're gonna give uh, folks some time to uh, join us. We'll get started in a moment. Good afternoon. If you're just now joining us, we're going to give it just a few more minutes to let everyone join who's planning to attend today. All right, good afternoon and welcome to the solicitation conference. Uh, today is Wednesday, February 8th, 2023, uh, and this is the SOW03-FY23 Market Research Services for Shared Technology Services, STS. Uh, just a few notes to go over here. DIR is recording this conference. Um, a link to the video along with the notes and list of attendees will be emailed. Uh, you can change your audio by switching between computer audio and phone call. Um, attendees are muted, and then you can uh, click the raise hand icon, um, if you would, right now to confirm that your audio levels are working and that you can hear me. Perfect. I see hands going up. Thank you for that. And you can lower those. Um, and then if you have, when you have questions, uh, submit all of your questions, please, through the Q&A function and the meeting controls. Uh, the chat may be disabled. Uh, and then official answers will be distributed per the rolling Q&A schedule, uh, see um, SOW section 4.3. And then just a quick introduction. Um, so we have Amy Fluger, who's the director of chief Procure, uh, director with the chief procurement office. Um, John Hoffman, deputy state of Texas CIO and chief technology officer. Brianna Ballinger, she is the hub reporting coordinator with the chief procurement office. And then Michelle Romero, assistant general counsel of the office of the general counsel. Uh, and then another contact is Lisa Ramirez, the procurement lead on this with the chief procurement office. Going over the agenda, so we're going to start with the statement of work, uh, the solicitation schedule, followed by the solicitation package contents, uh, the statement of work overview, response organization, and then evaluation criteria. Uh, then we'll move into matters of law, uh, followed by a brief break, and we'll come back from that for questions and then closing out the conference. Um, I am now going to turn it over to Amy Fluger. Thank you, Kyle. I'm Amy Fluger. I'm Director of Enterprise Procurement at DIR in the Chief Procurement Office. And today uh, with me will be John Hoffman as well. We'll tag team just a little bit through this presentation. Next slide. Okay, so this is our schedule uh, for our solicitation. We sent the statement of work out to the DBITS vendors in the categories we're uh, looking under and on February 3rd. Today's February 8th. And yes, if any of you are still writing 22 on your calendars, remember it is 23 already. Uh, the rolling Q&A period is from the date we sent this uh, SOW out through February 17th. And rolling Q&A out allows us to see questions early and get question answers out to you quickly while an answer may spur on another question, we'll, we'll keep rolling through those as we work through your questions with uh, ending February 17th. So the last questions um, can be submitted by the end of the day, February 17th. 
Deadline for submitting the response to this statement of work is March 1st at 2 p.m. Then we'll move into evaluations, clarifications, and uh, potentially amended responses in March. We'll have negotiations in April with an anticipated award date in May. Next slide. Okay, so in the solicitation packet, you would have received these sections. We have the statement of work for the services, and that's information for you with instructions. You would see in attachment one, the STS operating model, that's supplemental information for you. Attachment two is uh, the contract table of documents, the is also supplementary information. Um, attachment three is a sample NDA. Attachment four is your respondent information form, and that is for you to give us information back. Next slide. I'm going to hand it over to John Hoffman to cover the statement of work purpose and overview. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is John Hoffman. I'm DIR's Chief Technology Officer and the state's deputy CIO. Can you hear me okay? Yes, John, we can All hear All right, you. I want to make sure I've, I've done this before and then people are like, I can't hear you. So um, thank you all so much for your interest in this procurement. Uh, DIR is recognized uh, in public sector as a leader in different services that we provide uh, through our shared technology services program. And um, we believe that that in order to achieve uh, this leadership, it's a combination of a constant monitoring and management of existing contracts, as well as always looking for improvement uh, in the next. And in public sector with uh, government, there's always the evolution of procurements and you know, contracts and services. And so we take this, uh, this responsibility very seriously. Um, the agency, DIR, uh, certainly has a, a great pulse on the existing operations and how things are done today. And we are always taking notes and thinking about, well, how does this work today? What would it look like tomorrow? Uh, we, we work well with our customers through different governance. We've got award-winning governance um, uh, uh, structure and model that uh, we get feedback at all levels from the customers and they're always kind of hearing their voice and what we do and trying to evolve the program. Sometimes we can't immediately, sometimes it has to wait for that next procurement, but we are, we're taking and capturing that information uh, through this process. And then when it comes time to really uh, uh, get ready to, to set the direction for the next series of contracts, uh, we look at things to say, well, not only are we hearing and seeing what we, we see internal to the program, what our customers are telling us, but let's make sure we're set in the marketplace. And, and that's what this role really is, is looking at us uh, uh, as, as we do business today and, and in the market, where is the strategic direction going uh, that we anticipate in procuring these different services. The um, uh, CTO office uh, leads this research effort and helps coordinate all the different um, um, evaluations and components of it. I won't go through the overall scope of work because uh, you all got that and, uh, and I'm sure there's uh, a lot of details in there. But generally, I will just say, you know, the, the, there's, you know, the five key components to it. You've got the market assessment technology roadmap that does take all these different technologies and trends and capabilities and best practices. And so that is a, that's a critical piece in defining uh, what the, the direction is that we need to go. Uh, you then look at uh, the pricing and how are those things set and what's the market for um, uh, how that is uh, um, provided in a compelling way for our customers to be able to take advantage of the services uh, at the same time is a is a viable within the marketplace and what people are looking at in, in their structures um, you know reviewing existing you gotta you, you have to make sure you're you understanding where you are to know where you're going to go and that uh, you know keeping a, a perspective uh, against where we are today um, and then transition, always, you know, moving uh, contracts. Um, it does, you know, in, in just clarity, it's not a matter of transition um, 
it, it's it's a contract transition that it, it's a consideration that we have to understand. And then finally, uh, evaluating uh, stakeholder needs alignment to these, right? Uh, so making sure that we have hit the mark in what they've told us and what, what we're looking at internally. So those are the key things, uh, certainly give much more detail and, and specifics in the scope of work. But as you can understand, the, the overall goal is to make sure that, that as we push these things forward in the market, that it is not only a win for DIR, a win with the customers and a win in the marketplace, that the people uh, really provide an end product that uh, is uh, continuing the, the legacy of what DIR is doing in the STS program. So thank you very much. Thanks, John. I'm gonna remind everybody, if you have questions, you can put them in the Q&A um, on the Zoom and we'll take a break later on where we'll look at those questions and come back and answer them. So if you have any questions, um, don't forget to use the Q&A feature in the Zoom webinar. Okay, let's talk about your response organization. Section 4.5 has deal details for responding to the statement of work. The information on this slide can be found in section 4.5.2, if you have it open with, uh, that you're looking at. And this is where we describe the response organization. I'm just gonna start off and I'm gonna say it several times. Please don't forget to sign the documents you were asked to sign. The transmittal letter is one of those. So is attachment four, the respondent information form. Section 4.5.1, part B, is the executive summary. This is primarily about your experience as an organization and of those proposed staff and your capabilities. That's the details we want in your executive summary. And that has really is speaking to the experience. Part C is your approach and methodology along with a draft work plan for how you plan to provide the market research. And then we have part D which is the pricing. It's a table embedded in the um, SOW. Um, fill out table four with your pricing. We are paying for the final accepted deliverable report for each of the four service components being researched. Just We're just looking for a price for that final report. Part E is where you will describe all assumptions if you have any. Reminder, a Q&A time is a great way to eliminate any of those assumptions you may have. And then again, don't forget, complete and sign attachment for the respondent information form. Okay, next slide. So this is the scoring weights that we're looking at. Experience, that's your executive summary that we talked about on the previous slide is 40%. Your approach and methodology along with the draft work plan is 20%. And then the price that you're gonna put in table four is 40%. That's the weighted criteria that we will be evaluating with. Okay, next slide. Things to remember. Again, I said I gonna, was gonna mention it often. Sign those forms, please. Um, uh, we don't want to eliminate anybody because you didn't sign your offer, your forms, the transmittal letter. Those are really, really important. And then of course, submitting your response. One minute makes all the difference. Please don't wait till uh, 155 on the first to send your email for your response. We have had where maybe the server takes a little longer. We have to go by what time we receive it. And it has to be received prior to 2 p.m. on March 1st. Don't wait, don't take that risk. Get it sent hours, if not days early <laughs> so that we don't have to eliminate you from being considered because it came in at two minutes, two, two o'clock and you know five seconds. We, we can't accept it if it's beyond 2 p.m. exactly. So uh, again, sign your forms and do not wait to submit your email to us with your response. 
Okay, next slide, I think we're moving on to Hub and Brianna's gonna talk to you about Hub. Hello everyone, my name is Brianna Ballinger. I am a Hub coordinator with DIR. Next slide, please. Today, we're going to talk about your hub subcontracting plan, otherwise known as the HSP. All respondents must ensure that their approved HSP is on file and current. Please be aware that you cannot proceed with any subcontractors that are not listed on your HSP. They must be approved by DIR hub office. Next slide, please. If you need guidance on updating your HSP, please reach out to our hub office. We will provide a complimentary review and assist you with any updates. Please remember, this review of your HSP must happen prior to the due date. And I will save questions for later. And I'll turn it over to Michelle. Hi, everyone. Michelle Romero. Um, I'm the Assistant General Counsel writing legal oversight for this statement of work. Um, so first, I just want to say that everyone who was sent the statement of work is a DBITS vendor. So the statement of work will be subject to the terms and conditions of the successful respondents DBITS master contract. Um, if you haven't already reviewed those, I suggest that you look back over those terms and conditions and consult with your legal counsel. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, this, this I believe has already been mentioned, but um, this statement of work may not be discussed with anyone other than Lisa Ramirez. She's the sole point of contact for the statement of work. Um, and if this restriction is not observed, it may result in us having to disqualify vendors and any of their related responses. We really don't want to do that. Um, you know, sometimes vendors think that they're just asking an innocent question of somebody they deal with regularly at the agency and they ask a question about a statement of work to somebody other than the designated point of contact and it can cause a lot of problems. So please, if you have questions, um, go solely through Lisa Ramirez, the, the point of contact for this. Uh, the only exception, is, as we just mentioned, is reaching out to Brianna with um, questions about your, your hub plan. Next slide, please. All right, so anything that you submit in response to the statement of work is going to be public information and it's subject to the Public Information Act, which means that if somebody makes a request for the information you've submitted, um, it may have to be released to the requester. So if you are submitting anything that is confidential, proprietary or copyrighted, please clearly mark that on the response. Um, if it's not clearly marked, then we will release that information to any requesters. Um, if information is clearly marked, we will submit it to the Office of the Attorney General, and they will determine whether or not they believe the information is um, subject to release. Uh, so it's not a guarantee, even if you mark it as confidential. I do request that you not mark your entire response as confidential um, or mark every single page without um, making sure that it's actually something confidential, proprietary, or copyrighted. Um, if you do that, we will submit the entire response to the Attorney General, and you will have to go through page by page with them and explain why you marked it as confidential. So uh, the, the key here is just to coordinate with your legal counsel and marking your response. Um, plan ahead and make sure that you're considering this beforehand because you don't want to be years down the line and have information that you have considered confidential released to the public because you didn't um, carefully mark it beforehand. Next slide, please. Oh, with that, um, I will turn it back over yeah. to Amy. Thank you, Michelle. So um, a, a reminder, please use your Q&A function for questions. See, we have one question so far. We're going to take a quick five minute break where uh, you can submit some more questions. And um, if we're able to answer them today, we'll answer them right after our break. Um, Otherwise, please submit your questions to Lisa Ramirez at lisa.ramirez at dir.texas.gov. And um, we will continue answering those through addenda that we will issue out to all the DBIT vendors in this category. Um, so again, five minute break. So it is 2.20, we will come back at 2.25. Again, please take this opportunity to ask questions and we will get back to you uh, in five minutes, 2.25.
Okay. Giving everybody a, a voice call back if they're within ears reach of their computer and stepped away while we took our quick break. And uh, we actually only have two questions. The first one is, what is the rationale behind the cost weighting of 40%? It appears this will likely end up in a selection of the lowest bid. So DIR has determined that the evaluation criteria was appropriate to determine the best value for the state. And the second question we received was, does DIR have a budget for this effort? And DIR is not revealing our budget. So that's all the questions we had. <laughs> um, next slide. Kyle, can you move to the next slide, Kyle? Perfect, thank you. So in closing, um, the, those questions we answered today, you had all the two of them um, are unofficial until distributed in the form of addendum. Um, we may hold uh, to see if a couple more questions come in um, uh, later today uh, to get that out. Um, we also include uh, this slide deck and the link to the recording when we send the addenda out with this. And uh, so be looking for that coming in your email in the next couple of days, let's say Wednesday, so probably Friday. Um, any changes or additional information regarding this SOW will also be distributed in the form of an addendum. So, and I see we um, actually forgot to change our schedule of events on this. So uh, schedule of events. Kyle, can you scroll up to the schedule slide? So here's your schedule slide. Uh, having the solicitation today, rolling QA is February 3rd through the 17th. Deadline for submitting your response is March 1st at 2 p.m. I'm gonna say 1.59 at the latest, but really guys, hit hit send by 1.30 at, at the latest, really. We don't, we don't want to disqualify anybody because it was late. Then we go into uh, evaluations and negotiations with an anticipated award date in May. Okay, if you'll scroll back to the last slide, slide 20 with our single point of contact is Lisa Ramirez. And she, she was out sick today, so I'm filling in for her on this conference, but please continue to use Lisa Ramirez as your single point of contact. Um, this presentation um, will be provided via a link in an emailed addendum. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon.